Hey there, everybody there. It is Thursday, January 28th, and you are watching Position Recovery Live. I am your host, Jeremy Grogan. Thank you for connecting. Thank you for what you most of you are probably going to watch this after I record. And uh, I've just started doing more live streams and using these moments to create my videos because I have a lot less production work involved when I do it this way. So thank you for uh, for your patience as the channel grows and things uh, move forward. I would love to have staff and and funding and things of that nature to actually be able to produce more content that's uh, of the produced type nature. But this is still going. This is really awesome and this is going to work really well. I want to first. Uh, I'm going to put this behind us on the backdrop. Uh, I came across this article. I'm not going to be going in any kind of weird direction here. I just simply came across this article and I wanted to, to use it kind of as a backdrop today. We are talking about honesty and that is what, uh, okay. So actually, oh, I didn't hold on just a second there. I had my notes up here. All right. So Step one in 12-step recovery, we are looking at honesty, relapse, and relapse prevention. And so we're closing out January. I, I'll be honest, I didn't really do what I should have done in January. I started my videos really late, and the intention was is that we would spend all of January talking about, um, about step one and about honesty, and I, I just really was taking kind of a break from everything and, you know, came back right after the election. So, but now we're back. And I said in a previous video, the world didn't blow up. Everybody's still here. Um, that's here. I know, um, gosh, guys, uh, a lot of people in the recovery community that I'm a part of, and I'm just watching, um, we we're losing a lot of people. So my heart goes out. My prayers go out to those of you that have lost loved ones, especially in through addiction or in addiction. Um, but in my own life and my own family, we've had I've had more more um, people pass away than at any other time in my life, and I've I'm watching people that are in our own recovery community, people struggling big time, and uh, a lot of individuals are are not making it through that. And there's some dangerous there are dangerous chemicals going out in a lot of the serious illicit type drugs like like meth and things like that, where they're cutting. Um, they're cutting their product with, with things like fentanyl and other, and other stuff. So, um, more than just being free of addiction, guys, I'm saying right now we're in a, in a time where, where this stuff isn't just about long-term health, but it, in the very immediate sense, there's, there's a danger for immediate health. And there are things that are in these, uh, in these drugs that are coming out that can, literally kill you. And I'm not even just talking about overdoses. I'm talking about they're cutting chemicals into this stuff that I think there's just people that don't really know what they're doing that are trying to capitalize or take advantage of the situation monetarily. And they're trying to make money because a lot of people are having struggles getting through this time. So they're maybe they're looking at, um, at drug sales and more of a business uh, tactic or strategy. And so they're just doing what they need to do to get the stuff out there, but it's dangerous. Our prayers go out and I do want to just move on, but we, um, we could, um, yeah, that's why we need to be doing things like this guys, uh, putting a YouTube channel together and talking about it. So I want to start off with just saying that honesty is something that we need to do for ourselves. We need to be honest with ourselves, but there's, there's, it doesn't stop there. We need to be honest with ourselves, self to others, and to God, our higher power. If you're not at a place where you've received or accepted a higher power yet, um, you need to be honest with yourself and to other people. And I have confidence that that God's going to come through for you in the time that He's allotted for you to do that. Let's just uh, start with prince or with uh, step one. We admitted we were powerless over our addictions and compulsive behaviors that our lives had become unmanageable. And like I said, as a backdrop to this video, I want to 
just briefly go over the headline here, talk about something that is in the first paragraph of the article, and, and then we'll move on. But it's, it's pretty cool. It says, Americans call for kindness, honesty, and civil discourse amid the spiraling pandemic, political rancor, and r- uh, racial strife. So this is not a political video. So whether you agree with the, the headline or not, that's not the point here. You'll see in just a second. Uh, right here, it says Boston, January 28th, 2021, PR News Wire, distributed by the growing uncertainty, sorry, <laughs> disturbed by the growing uncertainty and turmoil in American life. The vast majority of the country's citizens are ready to hit the restart button on how issues are framed, debated, and solved, according to a new book, Relevance, by a leading communication CEO. The The highlighted portion here is the country's citizens are ready to hit a restart button. Now it's going to say on issues that are how issues are framed, debated, and solved. There's two things that I want to pull out of this. The first one being uh, that civil discourse is something that we're going to need to learn how to do because our country's where it is because we don't know how to do that. Um, I'd say for the most part, it's not, this isn't really a political statement, but I think in general, the left is trying to suppress or shut off the right. And I'm sure that there are even people on the right that would like to shut off and suppress the left. But doing that doesn't do anything for anybody. We have the First Amendment for a reason. Our Constitution was designed that way so that um, in, in another video on a different uh, platform, uh, on a whole nother uh, kind of topic, not recovery related, um, I talked about the something that Dennis Prager had said. And th- again, this is not a political discussion, just the, the um, a pressure cooker has like a steam valve and that steam valve is free speech in the analogy. And so free speech, now let me bring this back to recovery, we need to have the ability to be able to dialogue and and have conversations. And this kind of goes back to honesty because people, people need the ability to be honest. And I think that if people feel like they can't be honest because they can't speak freely, then people aren't going to be honest. And we have to have, we have to be able to be honest to ourselves and to others. You can't just be honest to yourself and God because everything's relational, right? Being honest is a way to build relationship and come back into connection with other people and to God. And, you know, theologically and as a Christian, we have, we have as a people, have been disconnected from God throughout the ages. And, and Christ was, was given as a sacrifice to not just save us from hell, but to restore a lost connection to our higher power, to God. And that is all relational. And we are intended to um, mimic the relationship that we would have with God as our father with each other. And whether or not you agree with that, you know, if you're not a Christian and you don't believe that way, this channel is not rejecting you. I don't reject you. I'm not going to condemn you. Understand though that there, that that my belief system it has been confirmed over and over again. And I, and I think that if you would just give the principles a shot, if, if you don't necessarily want to connect that with God at this moment, understand that there is fundamentally something uh, relational in the nature of, of our recovery and becoming whole and, and, um, and being restored. And so the restart button guys, let's, Let's just all take a moment where we're at and kind of reflect on, do I need a restart? And this month right here, uh, uh, January is the month for restart. Well, every time and every day and every moment, all right, God's grace is uh, is new every morning. But for the year, if we can just take this moment and honesty is the step that we're on um, here for this for this whole month. Let's just hit that restart button and. And, and everything, you know, it doesn't matter where you're at. I'm, let me just give you a small little testimony about honesty and about um, anybody can do this. At, let's say, four or five years ago, I was a, a main leader in a celebrate recovery group of people. 
and I had previous Celebrate Recovery experience and I got brought in and I was one of the main leaders and our speakers. We had actually a, a team of like six to eight people and we'd all rotate through teaching the lessons and doing announcements and all that kind of stuff and uh, connecting with people, leading groups. And I, I was doing that and I had a massive relapse on alcohol and I, and I lost all of that. Um, and I went in front of the, the church and I confessed it. And that was such a humiliating experience in, in a positive way. It changed it. First of all, it let everybody, everybody that was there realized that this thing can grab anybody and that no, and then it showed me that nobody's higher or above anything, but it really, I appreciated having the support of everybody and, and I'm a firm believer, like, like there's no way in, in that sense where I had, uh, relapsed and kind of fallen in that area that I, I, in an immediate sense should not be coming back next week and, um, you know, be teaching and preaching or whatever, whatever you would call it. And so it was a way for me to step back and reevaluate really everything in my life. And I got honest and now I'm practiced in honesty and, you know, I'm going to, I've, you know, messed up in some areas of my life, not alcohol and not tobacco, but, and I've made the confessions that I need to make to the people that I need to make them to, but it's become a lifestyle for me. Honesty doesn't stop at step one. It's not like, Hey, I get to be honest one time during step one and then we're good. It's, it has to be fundamentally something that we continue to do. Uh, you could really say that about all the steps, but as a principle outside of the steps of Alcoholics Anonymous or AA or, um, or NA or sober recovery, outside of the 12 steps, we, we need to even have honesty just become something that, that we develop. And I think a lot of people would admit that anyway, because we, we have to change really pretty much everything that we've ever we've known because what, what we've known hasn't worked. And so without anything else to say on that, just this is the time to hit the restart button and let's get right in to the content. Actually, before we do that, I just want to, to tell you guys, if this, uh, if my content's meaningful to you, if it helps you out, please subscribe to the channel. That's, that's a big help here. Make sure that you enable the notifications because if you don't enable notifications, you won't, get, you won't be notified. I, I don't know why they do that. It should be really, you just subscribe and it should just you know, the notifi notifications should, should come, but it helps out to build this community. Also, if you can, if you can share the video, that's probably the best thing that you could do to help support what I'm doing here. I would like to grow, um, not just for me, but I want to, I want to, um, have a community, uh, and I want to have people able to be a part of positioned recovery. That's not just myself, other people to contribute to the channel. And, um, another way, if you just go to the description box below, there's ways that you can support the channel. There's some free stuff. I am a composer. I produce music and, uh, have a kind of a position studios. You'll see, you know, um, branding for it here and there. That's the, that's my personal, uh, recording, uh, business kind of thing, but I also do that for myself. And, uh, anyway, there's, you can look up Jeremy Grogan on the various platforms that are available. Uh, Amazon Music, Spotify, YouTube Music, Apple Music, Deezer, and Pandora. You don't even have to pay for anything. You can literally just listen to the music. And if you're not paying for those services, you'll get some ads. If you are paying for those services, it's free to you. And it helps out, helps me out. And I think I'm getting ready to release a new album. It's an album that I've already had completed for a while. And I had three of them, but I want to... Um, I didn't want to distribute them all at once. And so we'll see how that goes, but, uh, okay, let's get right into it. So the, what you're seeing here, I'm, I'm a part of like 15 different Facebook groups, uh, that are recovery related, all kinds of different recovery. So some of them are focused on NA, some of them are focused on alcohol. Some of them are just focused on recovery in general. And so this, uh, this list was posted by an individual. And so I, I want to maintain anonymity. So on posts, I don't put people's names in there, but I wanted to just recognize I didn't come up with this list. It's not something I put together and somebody may come across here and say, Hey, I posted that list. Well, it might've, it might've been you <laughs> if you, if you, um, posted this lately, but I appreciate whoever posted this. There's no plagiarism intention here. I'm just going to go through line by line. And we're going to talk about, um, relapse prevention and 
again, the reason that we're talking about this, because this is about honesty. We have to be honest about what, um, and I, I, I really haven't read through all of this. I just, I read through a couple of these things. And so I think it's, I, I wanted to not read it on purpose so that we could kind of go through, uh, this and may, maybe I'll use an example on my own life. Um, or we'll just talk about each one of these individually. So this is the relapse prevention trigger homework sheet, which is in the description box as well. So if you want to copy and paste this for yourself, print it out or something, you might even be able to find it online. And so number one, what was the trigger? We need to be honest and say what triggered our, our, the, the, the moment of, of our full on relapse. And I I haven't really read through some of all this, so I, I may be ahead of myself, but I will tell you that the relapse actually happens before the event. So before I took my drink, there was other stuff going on. If we're honest, you know, you don't have to be honest, but if you are, you'll, you'll know that uh, something else was going on well before that. So we do want to identify the trigger. So the, the trigger might not be, you know, what triggered you to immediately drink. It might be what triggered the thought process that led you to uh, a negative place over a period of time where then you, you drank or used as a, as a result of that kind of whole, whole thing. Number two, how were you feeling just before you felt like drinking or drugging? And so this is, this is kind of what I was talking about. The, um, the first one, which is what was the trigger is probably going to lead into the, the, how were you feeling just before the, you felt like drinking? And this might just, this might be, um, not immediately. So I, I imagine that this questionnaire is intending for the immediate sense, but also consider, you know, how have I been feeling? What, Feelings have changed. Let me let me go back in my mind to where I was really strong in my recovery, and now I feel weak. I feel like I want to have a drink. I want to. I feel like I want to use. What? Where did that go wrong? What happened? Like, was it a movie that I watched? Was it a person that I was hanging out with? What was causing me to um, to start feeling different right before I drank? Because we want to kind of trace it back. And the reason we want to trace it back is because we want to identify these triggers. We want to identify these things so that when they come up again, that we we're basically learning from our mistake in order to move forward. Because again, God's mercies are new every day, every morning. You're not a failure. If, so, if somebody is watching this right now and you have relapsed even recently, and maybe you relapsed yesterday, you are not a failure. This is a journey that we're on and we get back up. If other people are telling you you're a, fa- a failure, you need to turn that off. You need to step away from those individuals and you need to, um, you need to find other people meetings, come to this channel. If you need to hear uplifting and positive things. Number three, what were you telling yourself just before you started to drink or drug? Look for additional hidden thoughts. Yeah, this is a big one. So what were, let me think about that for myself. What was I th- telling myself just before I started to drink or drug? Well, for me, it would be, I'm probably driving into the liquor store parking lot and I'm going to sit there for a moment and I'm going to think about, wow, I'm sitting here and I'm about to go in and buy, uh, my MO was like a fifth of HRD vodka cause it was so cheap. Um, you know, if I'm going to, at the times that I had relapsed, I probably would buy something more expensive, but if it was going to continue, I would go for the cheap stuff. That's just how I think, man. Uh, try to save some, save some money. But as I'm sitting in the parking lot, you know, what kind of thoughts are going through my head and, and probably sad thoughts, probably thoughts of failure. I'm probably thinking about, um, how maybe I failed in other places of my recovery and maybe I'm getting, letting that get to me. Maybe, maybe if, um, now this isn't true for me, but if you if somebody was unfaithful and they have some pressing, uh, pressing conviction on them. If you're in a committed relationship and you're unfaithful, that that could start a chain of thoughts that could lead into, um, you know, relapse. It could be um, possibly the death of a loved one. That would be a big trigger. It could also be something if you're a parent and you have kids and something happened to one of your kids. That could that could be something. But it can also just be like our character defects, right? And so 
I think a lot of times, I think most of the time, they're going to be character defects that are just coming through. And we're probably, there probably is an event that happens in our lives that we were not necessarily prepared for. And this is the way we've always managed those things. And we have to learn to be honest and say, hey, I don't even know how to deal with this thing. And there, there's an answer. So if, if, if it doesn't come up in these questions, I'm going to tell you that's, this is why we reach out to other people. It, and it's not even just so that we don't drink. It's really if, let's say, let's say I lose my job. Okay, I get fired. And I've got three months sober and I get fired and I'm now sitting in front of the liquor store and I'm like, I don't know how to deal with this. I need a drink. Okay. We need to reach out to somebody for a couple of reasons. Maybe, number one, to help us not go drink. But number two, we don't know how to deal with a situation like that, clearly, because we're at the liquor store and that's how we're trying to deal with it. So we have to admit that we don't even know how to deal with a situation like that. And we need to go beyond just staying sober in this situation. We need to, first of all, call somebody and say, hey, I really want to drink right now because I don't know how to deal with the fact that I just got fired. And if you have a sponsor or a pastor or a close friend that's in recovery, those are the people you want to reach out to. And, and hopefully that person will either be able to, to um, comfort you in that moment and keep you from drinking. And uh, if they don't know really how to guide you through how to deal with this, then maybe they know somebody else who does and they can bring that person into the conversation and maybe keep that, keep both of them there. So if you have a friend that has another friend that knows how to, you know, they, maybe they've lost their job recently and they, you know, you need some help in that area. I don't, I don't think they should just move you to that other person. Maybe they can bring that person into the conversation and you guys can spend some time together working that out. Um, number four, what did you do? So in our case here, we're, we're going to say we are identifying the trigger. What was I feeling? What was I telling myself? And what did I do? So I, I think number four needs some context. So I'm going to move on a little bit to number five to see if we can put number four into context. Which thoughts led you to which addictive feelings and behaviors? Okay, so what did you do? I, I don't know if this... I don't think they're saying uh, this is relapse prevention. We're only on number four. So what we did is not drink yet. I think um, what are we telling ourselves? Yeah. Okay. So I guess the, what you did thing was now I'm, I did, I drove to the liquor store parking lot and now I'm sitting there. Okay. So that's what I've done uh, as a result of these thoughts. The trigger was, yeah, let's, let's, we're building this thing out. So the trigger was I lost my job. How was I feeling before I took a drink? Well, I was feeling worthless. I was feeling um, anxiety. I felt like I had just failed. Um, what are you telling yourself before you start to drink? Yeah, I'm telling you. I'm telling myself those things. What did I do? I drove to the liquor store parking lot. Uh, which thoughts led me to which addictive feelings and behaviors? I don't know that I think of it that way. Which thoughts led me to which? I know. Uh, thoughts of failure are gonna are going to lead me to want to drown myself in um, in alcohol and to to just uh, to not to not be in the situation. I want to I want to escape, right? So that's primarily why I'm going to drink. And that those those are the thoughts. Uh, uncomfort. Uh, basically, I'm not comfortable in my own skin. So. Those are the kind of thoughts that are going to lead me to do that. Uh, number six, what was the chain of thoughts, feelings, and actions? Okay, well, yeah, so I lose my job, and immediately I'm feeling fearful. I'm scared. Okay, my, income's, my income is gone. Uh, my, my wife's going to be mad. My, how am I going to support my kids? Uh, how, you know, how am I going to buy gas? Like all this financial stuff, okay, and it leads into all these feelings. You guys can see where it's going here. Um, and then, uh, so that's the chain. So the chain of thoughts is this is, so number one, I could have broken this chain of thoughts by what was the trigger? Okay. I got, uh, I lost my job. I got fired immediately. I probably should have talked to my sponsor or talked to a pastor or talked to somebody, talk to my wife, say like, like, let's try to deal with this situation now. 
Um, because I probably haven't told my wife this yet. I probably haven't told anybody. Now I'm sitting at the liquor store and I'm about to drink. And this, uh, man, I, I was there so many times. I don't do that anymore. But man, I, I, I know what it's like. And it's like, once I've made that decision that I'm going to drink, I'm going to just do it. And what all of this is designed to help us do is to, to at some point before the drink, um, how can we snap out of it and then, and go, Oh my gosh, I'm, I'm sitting here at the liquor store. What am I doing? You know, I need to call my sponsor. That's the goal of all this. We want to try to, we want to try to get, get us in, in you, all of us. We want to try to get to this place where, where we don't have to finish the relapse, right? We, we, let's just admit that we had the relapse in our mind. We sat there at the parking lot we wanted to use. And now, uh, I need to, I need to reach out. All right. Number seven, what could you have told yourself? I think I just answered that. I think, I think number seven is what I just answered. What could you have done? Yes. That's what we could have done. We could have, like I said, we could have immediately after having the, the lost job experience, we could have um, reached out to somebody about that. Uh, number nine, what emotions could you have pushed? Okay, let me read. What emotions could you have pushed yourself to feel? I, I don't understand this. I don't know if this is a person's list or opinion or if it's something out of like uh, literature, but I would, I would say that emotions, my experience with emotions is that they're not something that you choose. Now the emotion is not what you choose. What we get, what I, here's what I, here's how I would say this. I'd say when we have an emotion come upon us, we get to choose to agree with that emotion. And through, through, um, disagreeing with an emotion and processing and a, a lot of, a lot of work in this area, it's not just come like that. We can then train ourselves to stop feeling those emotions because look, emotion will come upon us and we will react to the emotion. And that emotion is, is some kind of a response that our body and our mind is, is making to a situation based on learned behavior. So that uh, an emotion of fear and crippledness because I lost my job and now I'm going to go drink, that whole process has been like developed and becomes um, conditioned in us. And so we're, we're going to feel the emotion. And I don't know that we can just shut that off. I will tell you every time I wasn't able to shut off this like pressing um, discomfort level. However, there came a time in my life where I learned how to how to um, ignore it. Like, like it's very hard to do, but just say how I'm feeling right now is not who I am and I'm safe. And after walking this out a number of times, each time that there would be a trigger, I would I would stop feeling that emotion as heavy and it would, it would eventually dwindle down. And then how do you feel now about what happened? Uh, smart recover. There's probably supposed to be something more there. So I'm not sure what that is. And I didn't research that on purpose because I wanted to kind of answer these questions naturally and um, go through this in a real environment. And so um, I'm, I'm about to close us out here, but I just want to say that this, it, it's, a, it's important for us to be honest. We need to reach out to people and become part of a community. And I'm going to tell you right now, as, as somebody who was a leader in the recovery community, and I had to go in front of all the people that I was ministering and teaching to and tell them I relapsed and I've been given another chance, I've, well, through all of my experience. I've given, I've been given lots of chances. Humility has become part. It, it, I've been now conditioning myself to be humble. I've conditioned myself to be honest. And if you don't want to say I've conditioned myself, well, God, through, through prayer and meditation and working the steps, I have developed into an honest person. And it is now a trait that I have. And I feel really, um, I, it just feels so right. And it feels good to not have to always be trying to, to fight the, um, fight, you know, being what, am I willing to be honest? Am I willing to confess? And so I, I just want to offer that hope guys. I mean, we, we can never let ourselves be so big up here 
that we can't confess or admit to things. Um, we need to be filling out questionnaires that are asking us how we're feeling and stuff and be honest. I think the time, I think when we get to a place where we start filling out questionnaires, like I'm in a, I'm in a training program for a mentorship thing and they gave us a sheet to answer, you know, things that you feel and you can over spiritualize it and say, well, I'm, I'm at the top of my game, man. I, I'm not affected by any of this stuff. I have nothing wrong with me. Like probably, probably in denial somewhere. We're probably not being honest. And, um, I, I generally will, will concede and say that there's an area that I'm not walking in and I might even actually be walking into it. And I think that people that are in, in the right place are going to be thinking that way. Uh, but look, this is a wisdom thing. This is a, this happens over a period of time and just enjoy the journey. So I'm going to wrap it up guys. I have been keeping these, these videos. Actually, you know what I should do? I should go check out the live stream and see. Oh, okay. I wanted to just check and see if we had anybody on the live stream. And I see that my wife was on there. And so, Hey Debbie, I saw that you called while I was doing the live stream, but I'm not going to end the live stream. Um, well now I'm going to end it. So I'm going to end it now, guys. I appreciate everybody. Thank you for coming to the channel again, share this video. If there's somebody that you know, that's struggling right now, share the video to them so that they can see that there's hope in confession and honesty. So really without anything else to say, guys, remember many are called, but you are positioned.